Hi there, I'm Judy Kroon, Canada's keynote humorist. Welcome to Laugh Long and Prosper, shelf help with a smile, stress busters with a smirk. You get the point, so let's get started. Today is Monday, so that means just another Mindful Monday, where we approach life with a little bit of meditation, a little bit of mindfulness. This one, this woman has an incredible sense of humor, but she's also an amazing meditation coach, Kara Colson. Uh, Kara works for a group in the Toronto area called Psychology for Growth. Most of Kara's services are covered under insurance plans as a result. So uh, Kara, thank you so much for joining the show. Thanks, Judy. You know, I'll never think of that Prince song again the same way. Yes, just another Manic Monday written by Prince, performed by the Bangles. Somehow, Kara, I think that music, fear, humor, it's all part of our right, bright, creative side of our brain. But especially humor I love. Am I wrong? Isn't it the best? No, you're not wrong at all. And in fact, you know, oftentimes you will see people, uh, myself included, will will go for a laugh instead of actually looking at that vulnerable, vulnerable piece of what's really going on. And I don't know if that is a, uh, a bad coping tool, um, maybe finding humor, dark humor in those places is, is not a bad way to look at things. However, time and again in my work, I can see people will, you know, kind of laugh off things as opposed to digging into them. And I, I'm guilty of that a time or two myself. Last week, we did a, uh, a wonderful exercise together. Quick review. Can you just uh, share with us what we did the, the last time, the, the thought meditation? I really like that. The one where we brought... Uh, labeling to thoughts just along. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, when you get yourself into that kind of uh, state where you are looking to not give the thoughts a, a space, so to speak, but yet they're still knocking at the door and looking for acknowledgement. Sometimes when we just label them as thought, 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 we're giving them that. I said to a client last week, this was a client who was a true Harry Potter fan. And oftentimes I try and find ways to bring the education to what people are interested in. And so she was a young adult, grew up on Harry Potter. And I said, it's almost like, you know how Harry had to bow to the hippogriff? Do you remember that part? And you had to do this big elaborate bow to, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like what we're doing with those thoughts. It's like thought, I see you. However, you know, I'm going to keep sitting here and focusing on my breath instead. And sometimes our thoughts like the hippogriff need that acknowledgement. And so that's kind of where that, that, um, that comes to light. Anytime you can throw in meditation and Harry Potter, that is a <laughs> win in my book. Oh, I could talk about meditation and Harry Potter till the cows come home. You know, J.K. Rowling herself um, uh, has been very open with her own challenges with anxiety and depression. And when you read Harry Potter, uh, and take a look at it through that lens alone, you see a total learning text and how to handle it. For example, you know the, uh, oh, what were they? They were uh, the little things that were kept in the um, trunk, so to speak. It was Defense Against the Dark Arts and it was being taught by a new teacher and they were actually asked to face their fear. They were asked to look at their fear and say with their wand, ridiculous. Now, when you think about that for a minute, how powerful is that? Because your fear is just a thought. Your fear is just the story you have in your head around perhaps something that's happened in your past, but it's not happening right now in the reality. And yet we still circle and carry all of this stuff and these beliefs that are simply just thoughts that at times are ridiculous and so if we don't let them um, take us over and if we make it even as visually fun as having your own magic wand and telling it it's silly 
it makes a huge difference. And in fact, that's really what mindful thought reframing is all about. Well, you know, I, um, I think you raise a really good point. You know, when somebody like JK Rowling can put her, and I wonder if anxiety is related to a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people, creative people have anxiety, have depression, and this is just a tool for them. One of their tools to help them to cope. You know, it's like, I have to, I have to write, I have to sing, I have to, uh, I, I have to get it out. Um, so really, really good point. Uh, so we did the thought exercise last week. Do you think for five minutes you can give us an exercise uh, that folks who are dealing with stress, who are trying to cope with these challenging times, um, is there something that you can share with us today? Sure, we could take an even deeper look mindfully. Thoughts are always connected to emotion and that's how our anxiety um, really can come into play and at times when um, you're taking a look mindfully at what is connected there okay I can see the thought now but what emotion am I connecting to this so we can go deeper here with the thought exercise and instead of labeling thoughts in our meditation we can label emotions I would suggest that anyone starting with this practice just say the word emotion. <laughs> There's times people come to it and then afterwards like, well, I was, I got anxious because I said sad in my head, but it actually wasn't. And you know, <laughs> we could go around in circles and circles. So um, you can just label emotion. So instead of a thought floating by that you're acknowledging, you can just acknowledge and label emotion instead and then when you're done your meditation time again you have that reflective piece of going wow I feel a lot you know and just being able to acknowledge that alone and be aware that these thoughts are deeply intrinsically and very nuanced connected with our emotions so uh, that's that's a process we can take a look at today sure okay well I'm gonna start the uh, the timer Okay. Um, and you just do your thing, all right? Okay, so if you find a place where you're sitting comfortably, or looking to be sitting comfortably wherever you are, you may choose to lie on the floor instead, lie on your bed, and just take the next few minutes to listen to my voice and let me lead you through this awareness and present moment, and also labeling emotion. Taking a deep breath into your nostrils. Noticing what that feels like as you exhale again. Looking with curiosity at the warmth of breath coming into your body and how your body releases that breath. With your exhale, noticing how your muscles relax just a little bit more. As you're breathing in, feeling your lungs fill with breath, Noticing your rib cage expand. And then feel your belly fall as the breath leaves your body. Noticing what it feels like to breathe all the way deeply into your belly. And as you focus on the present moment experience of breathing, you may notice different emotions presenting themselves to you. If you do, label them emotion. 
give them a bow as you would to the hippogriff and acknowledge but don't attach bring yourself back to breathing if you find you need a deeper anchor to just focus on present moment you can count your breath taking an inhale two three four and an exhale two three four five inhale two three four exhale two three four five continue with that using that as an anchor to bring you back to the noticing of your breath but as those emotions present themselves acknowledge give them a bow and let them move on find yourself coming in and out of present moment noticing or counting using your anchor and then losing yourself to thoughts or emotion and then bringing yourself back time and again to your attention here focusing on the here and now how does it feel like to breathe What does my body feel like sitting here, feeling it? Again, any emotions that come, label them emotion, let them go. Focus on your breath. Know by doing this, you're building the resiliency to take yourself out of those emotions and observe them in a calm place. You can remove yourself from emotion just by channeling focus on your breath even just for a minute or two. This gives you the space to make a different choice around your emotions in moving forward. Take another deep breath in. And release the breath. and bring yourself back to this conversation. Did you notice anything there for yourself, Judy? Um, You know, it's funny because I was uh, thinking of Harry Potter as we were going into that. (laughs) So when you said, you know, take a bow to your emotions, I just imagined, you know, just sort of bowing with one of the capes on and a wand. And in a way, it sort of, uh, it acknowledged the emotion, but also kind of made, and it's part of that humor thing, I guess, that wackiness that we have. It also kind of made fun. Of, it took the power out of the emotion by making fun of it. Do you know what I mean? Yes, that's the whole idea. Because emotions continue. We are human beings. 
we are always going to have those emotions. And even if we're people who think we're hiding them, we're really not. We're just creating, you know, another wall around ourselves. Emotions are incredible. They're wonderful. They're powerful, but we can't get swept away by them. And oftentimes we do. Same with our thoughts. So in doing these exercises alone, you just have an awareness of finding that kind of power as you were talking about in a sense it, it could be a cloak and a magic one for one you could be a little hobbit carrying your ring to you know <laughs> to rule them all in, in in a thought um you know all of those great great wonderful stories we all enjoy so much actually have really deep lessons when you reread them in mental health how to find our strength with it how to carry on and be resilient and I think that's why we love those stories so much. We can definitely all relate to them. And as I said off the top, whenever we can incorporate Harry Potter, that is an extra bonus. <laughs> I guess There's another great Harry Potter yeah. uh, quote that I use often with some of the young adults in particular that I, I speak with and work with. And it's, I don't remember the exact quote, I should have it written down, but it was said by Dumbledore. And to me, it solidifies what mindfulness is really truly all about because he says something along the lines of once you turn a light on in the darkness you always have the light mm. and i don't know the exact quote but um it really is a powerful message to become aware of the fact that once you really really go into the dark and allow yourself to acknowledge where those thoughts are, what they mean to you, and how they're connected to your emotions, you already have a light shone there. You already have turned on that switch to be able to form the ability to make another choice. Once the awareness comes, everything starts to shift and change. And that's what's glorious about this type of work. On the phone with me, I have Kara Colson. Kara is a meditation coach, and you can reach Kara at pearlmindfulness.net. That's pearlmindfulness.net. Also, Kara's uh, email account, pearlmindfulness at gmail.com. Pearlmindfulness at gmail.com. Uh, Kara works out of the GTA and she is with an organization called Psychology for Growth. That means most of Kara's services are covered under insurance plans. So that is terrific news. Um, as always, we like to keep Mondays now reserved for just another Mindful Monday with everything that has been going on with COVID. Uh, stay tuned. We will have another episode with Kara. For more information about uh, Laugh Long and Prosper, more information about Kara, you can also reach out to my website, judycroon.com. That's judycroon.com. Kara, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Judy. And you know what? I guess the only thing I really would like to say is send your own letter to Hogwarts to yourself. <laughs> 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 I'm still waiting for mine. I'm 51. I mean, come on. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kara. Thanks, Judy.